Almost all companies that manage inventory use a purchase order system, but even companies that don't manage inventory can benefit from using purchase orders. From purchasing computers to office supplies, from professional services to repairs and maintenance, managing your company's purchasing is important. In this tutorial, we'll show how you can configure and use the Sage Pack PO system to manage the purchase of ad hoc items and services that are not maintained in an inventory system. This methodology applies whether or not you are running Sage Pack inventory control. So let's jump right in and get started. The PO system integrates intimately with General Ledger and Accounts Payable. So let's review the setup options in purchase orders to understand how it works and how to ensure appropriate accounting transactions flow through to your general ledger. First, we'll review the setting that allows us to create purchase orders for ad hoc items. You'll find it under Purchase Orders, PO Setup, Options, and we'll go to the Processing tab. Here you'll find a checkbox to allow non-inventory items. By checking this option, you'll be able to enter non-inventory ad hoc items on your purchase orders. Again, this applies whether or not you're running the Sage Pack inventory control system. You can also elect to be warned whenever you're entering an ad hoc non-inventory item. We'll leave it off for this example and we'll save and close the options form. Next, we'll look at the General Ledger integration setup that you'll find under the GL integration icon. In the middle of the form, you'll find a checkbox to allow creation of GL entries for non-inventory expenses for receipt and returns. If you check this option, a GL entry will be created during receipt of the non-inventory items. There would be a debit to the expense account and a credit to the clearing account. If the option is not selected, no accounting transaction will occur when receiving the items. Rather, the transaction will be created only when the items are invoiced. We're going to leave this option off. Now let's look at the default GL accounts that have been set up for our PO transactions. These account numbers are used when we choose the non-inventory method. This is an important consideration because no matter what non-inventory item you place on a purchase order, this default account will be assumed. The PO entry clerk will need to override this field to account correctly for what you're purchasing. The accounts that are important to us for this tutorial are the default inventory expenses account and the non-inventory payables clearing account. For the default inventory expense account, you can set up an account frequently used like office supplies or repairs and maintenance or whatever would be appropriate for your company. Alternatively, you might consider using a suspense account. If you use a suspense account, you would expect the account to always have a zero balance. If your PO clerk were to incorrectly code non-inventory items on a purchase order, you would see the error as a balance in the suspense account. At this point, We've completed all of the necessary setup steps, so let's close the GL integration form and dive into processing an example PO for a non-inventory item. We'll start by going to PO Transactions and opening the Purchase Order Entry form. We'll enter vendor number 1200, Chloride Systems, and we'll accept the defaults in the header and jump down to the Details section. Here we'll click on the Item Tax button. The screen that opens shows all of the fields that you would see if you scrolled horizontally across the detail line in the grid view. You can also hit F9 to open this view. Let's order a case of copy paper. In the item number field, we'll type NA because this field is really not applicable for this non-inventory item, but you're free to enter something more descriptive if you'd like. Now we'll tab over to the description field and type case of paper. 5,000 sheets. And we'll hit Tab and enter 1 for our location. And we'll move to the Quantity field and enter 10. And next, our unit of measure, EA for each. And then our cost, which is $32.99. Now let's move down to the Expense Account field. You can see that the field has defaulted to the Suspense Account that we elaborated on earlier. However, as we mentioned, we need to change it to the appropriate account for this item, which would be 6500 for office supplies. 
Now we can add the line and close the form. And finally, we'll post the PO and we'll skip printing the document and close the screen. To continue the process, we'll need to receive the item. To do this, we'll open the receipt entry form and use the finder to locate our PO. It should be the last one entered, so we'll scroll to the bottom of the list and make our selection. Now we'll go ahead and hit the Receive All button and then the Post button, and we'll skip printing the document and close the receipt entry form. Now let's assume that we just received the vendor's invoice, so we'll go ahead and enter it into our system by using the Purchase Order Invoice Entry form. We'll enter the vendor's invoice number 99991 and we'll move down to the Receipt Number field, and using the Finder, we should find it at the bottom of the list since it was the last one we created. And a quick review shows that this is the correct information, so we'll go ahead and hit the Post button. We're notified that posting has completed, and we'll close the message and the invoice form. At this point, we've received the non-inventory items and entered the vendor's invoice into our PO system. Now we need to run the day-end process in Inventory Control to send our transactions through to Accounts Payable and the General Ledger. Importantly, if you're running purchase orders without Sage Backpack Inventory Control, you would instead run the day-end process in purchase orders. Since we are running Inventory Control in our demo system, we'll go ahead and run the day-end process by going to Inventory Control, IC Periodic Processing, Day-end Processing, and we'll click the Process button. While it's running, it's important to note that in this example, our Sage Backpack system was configured to automatically post our transactions in Accounts Payable and through to our General Ledger. We'll focus on the Auto Post feature in a future tutorial. Upon completion, we receive a notification that a GL batch was created. Let's take a look by going to General Ledger, GL Transactions, and open the batch list. And here's the batch that was created, and by double clicking, we can see the details. And that completes the PO process for non inventory items. So, to recap, you can use the Sage Backpack PO system to manage the purchase of ad hoc items that are not maintained in an inventory system. This methodology applies whether or not you're running the Sage Backpack Inventory Control Module. Give us a call if you need assistance with this or any other feature in your Sage Backpack system. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Bye for now.